Hello, Bay Ridge. Welcome back to another After Hours. This is the second one this week, so it's kind of a special edition, an After After Hours, I guess. And we wanted to talk about the topic of did Jesus ever speak about marriage and homosexuality? I felt these two topics were so important and we didn't have time to deal with them, but they're things that you consistently hear want to deal with them both. And one of the things you commonly hear is, look, if this was really important, Jesus would have talked about it. He didn't. And so don't make a big deal out of it. You know, the, the church needs to change its position on this. And I want to state very clearly and bluntly, that statement is utterly wrong. On every level, it's utterly wrong. And I'm going to kind of address this in increasing importance in understanding these things uh, or, or until the end I'll make one comment at the end uh, number one understand that uh, Jesus did address this I mentioned on Sunday Matthew chapter 19 and in Matthew 19 Jesus speaks for example regarding marriage and implicitly it regards homosexuality as he says marriage is you know God made them male and female and therefore a man a male will leave his father and mother, his male parent and his female parent, and be united to his wife, a female, and the two will become one flesh. That is marriage. In fact, uh, Jesus gives the clearest definition of marriage in all of Scripture. If I had only one text to deal with, it would actually be Matthew chapter 19, because Jesus is the clearest in all the Bible. He doesn't lower the bar. He actually raises the bar. He was correcting a false understanding uh, of divorce in this case and saying, no, it's meant to be a lifelong union. It's not this willy-nilly divorce that you all are talking about. And so if he was correcting their understandings, they also said that marriage did not allow male and female. It could be, I mean, did not allow male and male or female and female. It couldn't be same sex, but it did allow divorce. Well, while Jesus is correcting the one, he would have certainly corrected the other. If he wanted to say, you all have misunderstood this thing from the beginning, and actually there is same sex unions, perfect opportunity. He is correcting. He's even bringing out all the implications of scripture, but in bringing them out, he actually strengthens the fact that marriage is only between a male and a female. So it's wrong. He did actually address it. Secondly, Jesus actually addressed sexual sin. As I mentioned on Sunday, the word porneia, in, uh, the, uh, the, which is coming out of the Greek, as it's used in the Old Testament, as it was developed in the Jewish culture of Jesus' day, and as it's used throughout the New Testament, refers to sexual sin of any sort. In Matthew chapter 15, verse 19, Jesus is giving a list of sins, and he's kind of really running through the Ten Commandments, but he does something interesting. He separates out porneia, and the word is moikeia, which is the word for adultery. There is adultery that is wrong, but that is not the only sexual sin. See, in our culture, many surveys show that about the only sexual activity that people are really against is they're against, uh, between consenting adults at least, is they're against adultery. If you got married and you didn't agree to have an open marriage, you ought to stick to your, your marital vows. But see, Jesus is saying it's not just adultery. That's not all that the seventh commandment is really against. It's all sexual sin. And he uses the word porneia. And again, that word in the Old Testament in Jewish use refers to any sex other than a man and a woman within the covenant bond of marriage. So the word porneia sometimes is used to include adultery, but sometimes it is used uh, in, a, in a list with adultery uh, so that they're, they're separated. But it's also used for prostitution. Paul uses it that way in 1 Corinthians 6. It's used to refer to incest. It's used to refer to bestiality. It's used to refer to same-sex activity. Notice Jesus did not specifically bring back the Mosaic law regarding incest, but nobody's saying he didn't address that, or bestiality or prostitution. He doesn't have to. It's all included in the word porneia, and he specifically included porneia in his list. So Jesus did speak to it. Third, and this is the most important thing, Jesus spoke to it because the whole Bible's the Word of God. The idea that it's only God's Word, if it came out of the lips of Jesus of Nazareth, is utter foolishness. And we should not listen to such things. 
Every scripture is Jesus speaking to us. As Paul said, all scripture is God breathed. When it's written down in Genesis, it's Jesus. When it's written in Leviticus, it's Jesus. When the Old Testament condemns all these forms of sexual behavior other than a man and a woman within the covenant bond of marriage, it is Jesus speaking. He is the word. He's the word that came to the prophets. He comes. And so when the same thing in the New Testament, people want to say, well, that's Paul that's speaking in Romans 1 and in 1 Corinthians 6 and in Galatians 5 and in Ephesians 5 and in Colossians 3. All of these places they want to say, well, that's just mean old nasty Paul. It is Jesus speaking through Paul. Jesus explicitly speaks through the moral law in the Old Testament, through the prophets in the Old Testament, and through the New Testament writings to condemn all forms of sexual behavior outside of a man and a woman within the covenant of marriage. Friends, we don't buy into this red letter Christian stuff that is utterly idiotic. And I'm sorry that's a strong word, but that's what it is. We are Bible Christians. There is no distinction. Oh, well, it was kind of true if, if Moses wrote it or Paul wrote it, but it's really true if Jesus wrote it. It is all given by the Spirit of God, and it is equally authoritative for us. The church has known this from the beginning. It's less important that the church has known it than the fact that, that the whole Bible is the Word of God. But understand, the church has known this from the beginning. And they've known that it didn't matter whether Jesus himself spoke it or Paul spoke it. They've understood and known this truth. And all of this foolishness has only arisen very, very recently, okay? We haven't come up with new understandings of what the Greek words meant or the Hebrew words meant or anything else. The early church fathers understood all of these things and they very clearly, accurately spoke to these things. So friends, when somebody tells you, did Jesus ever speak about marriage and homosexuality, we can say two things. Number one, yes, he did. But number two, and more importantly, he really did because it doesn't have to come through Jesus's lips. We're not red letter Christians. We're whole Bible Christians. We believe the whole word of God. All of it is God breathed. All of it is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. We do not reduce the word of God in any way, shape, or form. Rather, we embrace it and we walk in obedience to it by the power of the Holy Spirit. So I hope this is helpful to you as we're thinking through these things. This coming Sunday, we're going to dive in a little bit further, kind of bleeding into Genesis chapter 3, actually, and looking again at why it's so important for us to understand the freedom of limits. I hope you have a great week, and I look forward to gathering in worship in person or online this Palm Sunday. God bless.